welcome now, ladies and gentlemen, to the first match inside a fence we have ever put on television here in the Sam Houston Coliseum in the city of Houston, where fence matches originated. Perhaps it is fair to say that the first match inside an enclosure of any kind took place in Galveston before it took place in Houston. The ring was enclosed inside a fishnet. But then, when that was to enclose Bull Curry, then when the here is Boyd Pierce. Texas death match rules means the match will continue until one man either quits or is unable to continue. No limit on fall. There can be three falls or 33 falls. One minute rest period between falls. There must be a winner. Behind there, I came fence at 235 from Houston, Texas, Gino Hernandez. And across the ring, his opponent, 245 pounds from Mexico City, Super Sock, Jose Lothario. This is the battle to the death. Of course, no disqualification, no time limit. No limit on the number of falls. It will end when one man cannot answer the bell for the next round. You've met Jose Lothario. You've met Gino Hernandez and been introduced to the referee. But now here in this first fall of this match inside the fence, you will have to meet the crowd just a little bit later because they are up in arms. They have had a tremendous amount of action during the night, but they've been looking forward to this one. Gino Hernandez with a side headlock. But again, I tell you that the first match inside a fence took place in the city of Houston and spread around the world. So Gino Hernandez, who broke that left arm of Jose Lothario and probably wishes that it had stayed broken because it's bound to do him a lot of damage before this match ends. And Gino comes around with a beautiful right and that one has not been broken. Object of the fence is twofold. It keeps the wrestlers in the ring, which is of paramount importance. It also keeps the fans in the audience, which is of equal importance. But in a match like this, where toughness is uh, the virtue that should shine above everything else, we're bound to see a lot of rugged action where Jose is in the ring, some wrestling is bound to take place under any circumstance, but he gets that permission from the crowd to slam away at Gino Hernandez and does it. So, Gino Hernandez caged with a man who knows his way around in the cage. A man who taught him to wrestle, the man who introduced him to the mat game. Gino has had no compunction about trying to whip his former mentor any way he can. Waist lock. Waist lock and Gino is caught in it. It becomes a bear hug with the pressure that Jose Lothario is using, and a rip across the face, across the eyes. Remember, no disqualification. The effort now of Gino Hernandez turning to try to use the corner and to use the fence, and he smashed it into it and managed to dent, not the fence, but to dent Gino Hernandez, and rather to dent to Jose Lothario, and now Gino Hernandez strutting because he suddenly feels cocky and able to, to do it, and Jose's in trouble. The first trouble of the night as far as he's concerned, but it won't be the last.
Gino Hernandez with a grip on the trapezius muscles of Jose Lothario, able to pour in the effort, but this isn't what he's after. He wants to do damage to Lothario before this match is over, but he knows he's got to soften him up. He's got to weaken him. He's got to tire him out before he can accomplish the other things. The same thing could be said of Jose Lothario. He'll have to wear Gino down. Whoa! Oh, man, that acted like a spring. And Gino Hernandez, for a moment there, looked like he was going to try to climb outside that fence. Something nobody has ever accomplished. Listen to that crowd in all of its bloodthirstiness, roaring for Jose to step in and clobber the man they know is Jose's toughest rival. He doesn't need any permission. But every time he clenches that fist, Jose means business. And every time he is set to lay it in there, that crowd encourages him all the way. So Jose stops and, and Gino plays the corners. Corners, of course, are equally tough to withstand because the pipes that hold the wire to the fence are twice as numerous in the corners as they are anyplace else. Ripping across the face, the effort to impair the vision, to blur a man's efforts to do something in, the, in that ring, and now a Fists and feet treatment. Ooh, man, he dropped in that tight and hard. And Gino Hernandez, reverse chin lock. You see him now as he pours it to Jose Lothario and hangs on there. Effort by Lothario to escape from this can only wear him down. Gino with that short hair that just a short time ago was non-existent. It had been shaved right down to the scalp when he lost to Lothario. And, oh, man, he laid it in there. He hauled off and clobbered him. One of Lothario's favorite blows. Hernandez takes a very big chance when he climbs up there because the you can see the fence itself extending above that top pipe and that is where it's possible to become severely damaged in this kind of a match Gino looking for a way to stop the inevitable approach of Lothario found Mark with his feet, and it gives him an advantage. And a inside leg lock, a grapevine, and you saw him drop him back, and he wants the count. Now remember, winning the first ball is just something that gives you an initial advantage and a boost to your ego. There it is. But winning the first ball is not winning the match. The man who wins the Winner last the first ball. ball seven the minutes, 34 seconds, position. Gino Hernandez. We'll be back here in a moment, right after we have this word from the studio. Less than 10 seconds remain in the intermission period of one minute between falls. Lothario must not only answer that bell, he gets a 10 count if he's down. There's the count. There's six, there's seven, and as he comes up, you see that Gino now gets the full signal to move in on him. So the first ball went to Gino, but that is um, only academic because winning the last fall is the object of this battle to the death. Gino Hernandez laying it in there on 
Jose Lothario. Ooh, and he now is going for the falls. Now the more experienced man in this type of battle is going to go after the punishment, knowing that that will win it rather than the fall. Oh, how he come up there with that beautiful left hand swing. And Gino hoping now to put Lothario in the, in the tough spot. A driving smash. There's a lot of swinging and a lot of landing of hard blows in this because they know that the man who can walk out of that fence is the man who's going to walk out with a win. Jose using that right hand more than he uses the left one, which is understandable considering that he is recovered. Oh, hard crash into the corner. And I mentioned there that you've got twice as many posts, two posts to crash into in that area. And Lothario now, look at those fans tell you, drive it in there. And they're giving Jose the full vote of confidence for him to blast. Gino Hernandez, and he is punishing Gino, punishing. There's one, there's two, there's three, and the second fall, the second fall the of this match goes to, Jose Lothario, two minutes, two seconds. goes to Jose Lothario. We'll stay right here. Let's look for a minute at Jose Lothario as he gets over there in the corner and he has a full minute's respite as referee Bronco Lubitsch moves in there to check on Gino Hernandez and see whether Gino is going to be able to get up and whether he's going to be able to wrestle in this third fall of this battle. 30 One seconds. fall each man, 30 seconds now remaining in the, in the rest period. And Lothario looks like he's breathing hard, but here is a man who can take an inordinate amount of punishment, who can respond seconds best under difficult circumstances who can always find that reserve and that is what has kept him as a favorite with the fans here in Houston kept him as a prime favorite so Gino is still down there goes the bell and Lothario is willing because if Gino does not rise up by the count of 10 this match will be over you've got to answer the bell so trouble for Hernandez. He took a lot of punishment. And here is Gino, Gino heading for the turnbuckle. And the turnbuckle is as hard as the fence. Except the turnbuckle is covered. The fence is not. And the fans are whooping for Lothario to hand it to him. He's handing it to him too. Both hands. Gino, right now, is getting the lesson of his young life. And I wonder whether he is as cocksure and confident as he has been. He was confident enough that time to be able to push Lothario ahead of him. And Lothario hit just about solar plexus high and hit the, into that uh, turnbuckle to knock the wind out of him. Gino in there and he is chopping down, biting at the face or the eye of, of Lothario. And he smashed him there. You notice that he, he took him right toward the center of the, of the fence and there is a, an up and down support in the center of the fence. eight or ten feet of, of fence, and then there is the center pole. And smashing into that is smashing it hard. And that time, Gino made sure that the failure, who was bleeding now from a wound on the head, made sure that he came crashing into that up and down support. Now it's Gino on the move. Now it's Gino looking to take over on Jose Lothario uh, completely and Lothario bleeding and bleeding badly as the fence catches the runt of it. Branko Lubic could stop this match if he feels that the 
cut is bad enough to permanently injure a man. And I want to tell you, it would be hard to convince Lothario that any cut is going to cost him a match there again, right at that center piece. The center pole again, and Lothario's in serious difficulties now as Gino aims for him with his 235 pounds. Up man, Gino Hernandez. And there's one, there's two, there's three. And we have a fall with Gino Hernandez now with the third fall in this battle. So we are back now with about 15 seconds remaining in the intermission period of one minute between falls. We're coming up on the fourth fall. But I point out to you that this could go four or 12 or 20 falls. It only matters when one man is unable to continue. That could be decided by the count as Bronco is doing it. Although he would be liberal with that because in a battle to the death, no man wants a questionable uh, victory. Over that top rope, he smashed into that um, fence and smashed into it again. He just bent the ropes back that far, and there, the ropes are no real protection. And this time, he was crashed into the centerpiece again, and it's Gino on top. There it is. We'll stay right here as Gino now has taken three out of four falls. Gino has taken three out of four. The question now is the future of Jose Lothario, whether he is going to be able to come out. So Lothario, listening for the timekeeper, I'm sure. Wondering about the possibility of stepping up into more punishment. He is bleeding badly from a cut on the head. He may have a cut on his nose or his face from the contact with that abrasive and difficult fence. And it looks to me like he's holding that left arm. It's possible that that arm that was broken was crashed into that unyielding fence. So Gino's hollering to referee Bronco Lubitsch to finish up the count. Gino has not gone down from the blows and that's a good sign as far as Lothario's fans go. He is bleeding from the blows and bloodthirsty Hernandez in there to chomp away at the wound of Lothario. There he goes for the stomach claw, driving into the midsection of Gino Hernandez, catching him right in the belly and putting the big squeeze on. But the hand of Hernandez was across his face at the time and it ripped in the area of his eyes. And here we've got Gino. It looked to me like he was looking for a way out of that ring. But he may want one even more now that Lothario has recovered somewhat from this. And Gino gets smashed into the middle of that fence. That fence is bound to have little bits of raised metal on it. Oh man, how he caught that one. Gino driven in there hard, driven in there solidly, and Jose Lothario measuring him for a wallet. For the wallop, he tries his best to clobber him right on the area that was affected. So, Lothario moves in as Gino Hernandez with blood running down his face from the constant banging crash into the, into the fence is urged. Jose is urged on by these fans. They want him to blast him, and he did that with a left. 
There's nothing wrong with that left arm right now, I'll tell you that. And if it did hurt him, he didn't care. Oh, man. A smash in there for Gino Hernandez. And he is, his face is covered with blood here from the contact with that fence. Drove him over that top rope. His feet were off the floor when he crashed into the fence itself and dropped back. The man down is, is Hernandez. And Jose is trying to make certain that he does not recover from this one. And he come in there beautifully. This could be a fall. So fall number five. Ball number five goes to Two minutes, Jose Lothario. Two minutes, seconds. The winner of the field ball, Jose Lothario. So Lothario takes the fall here for fall number five. And right after we have this word from the studio, we'll be back for fall number six. Bell sounds now for the sixth fall, but listen to that count. The fans with it. So Gino Hernandez got up before the count. But uh, Jose has moved in there with the thought that he's going to fix him for a count that he will not be able to move out. And here you are, fall number six with Jose Lothario trying to make sure that this time Gino Hernandez will not be able to respond to the bell. Roch and he drove him into the fence and I was about to say that he was going to have a crotch lift and then a slam, but it didn't work out that way. Boom! Planted a set of knuckles right smacking in his face. Listen to those fans drive him, screaming for him to move in there for the kill. On top, Jose Lothario. We've got to fall again, but remember that while we have just had the sixth fall. We're the sixth fall. One minute, eight seconds, Jose Lothario. We've had the sixth fall, but the end of this match depends on whether or not one of these men cannot, cannot answer the bell for the next fall. That's what counts. So Jose Lothario stands over him. We'll stay right here. We'll watch Gino Hernandez's efforts to rise seconds. up. 30 seconds. He has now to get up, and I can have no doubt that he has a sore head. He has crashed into that fence, but so has Lothario. And... In spite of the fact that seconds. Gino had his head shaved recently, there is no question that he has more on the top of his man. head to protect it than Jose Lothario has. So the man down is Gino Hernandez. Crowd telling Jose to move in. The bell rings to start fall number seven. So Hernandez made it. He is up for fall number seven. And the, it could be a lucky number for Jose, considering the shape that Gino is in. And right now, as he tries to jerk that arm out of the socket, fans are telling him to break it, just as Gino broke his arm here way back in the beginning of, the, of December. Armbar. He's working on that arm. He's trying to force Gino Hernandez to quit, to say that he's unable to continue. And if Gino is unable to continue, now continue doesn't mean losing the fall. And um, Lothario is arguing that Gino doesn't have the right, doesn't have the right to quit. He wants him to make him give up for the match. But the truth of the matter is that Gino does have the right. We're going to stay right here. We're going to stay right here. The seventh fall goes to Gino Hernandez. Rather, I beg your pardon. The seventh fall was conceded by Gino Hernandez. And Jose Lothario is now 
four to three, but this doesn't mean much until he takes the last fall. So referee Branko Lubic gave Gino the right to capitulate in that fall when actually that's the referee's prerogative, but the point should be that Gino Hernandez has the option to quit for the whole match. And uh, this is what Jose Lothario was trying to drag out of him, trying to get him to concede. So with less than 10 seconds remaining in this, the eighth fall coming up. There's the bell, the sound of eight. Listen. So Gino Hernandez is up, Jose Lothario moving in, protecting that left arm on which Lothario worked and there was no doubt that Lothario was anxious to work on that arm for the simple reason that he knows what Gino would do to his arm if he could. Front headlock for Lothario. And oh man, the, the strain and the pressure that that puts on the, on the deck itself. There it is, that same driving lift and Bronco Lubitsch looking close. There's the cinching of that front headlock as you notice where he's grabbing him up above the elbow and he has his own arm. So he puts that on to keep that neck twisted, keep the head turned, keep pressure on a man who right now must be feeling that pressure to the utmost. You saw him drive the tips of his fingers into the throat and Oh, 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 Gino Hernandez just dropped on that top turn buckle and, uh, and on the rope and this is the most dangerous spot that Jose Lothario has been in yet. The eighth fall and Gino Hernandez has won it by lifting Jose Lothario up and dropping him on the top turnbuckle, nasty fashion, and you can bet that Lothario is right now in the most difficult spot he has been in since this match began. We will have fall number nine coming up right now, fall number nine, but Jose is down trying to get up, he is in a bad way. He is. There is 15 seconds remaining here. The crowd is screaming for Jose. And bad sign. Jose started up and then fell over and is doubled up. There goes the bell. There is the count. The crowd isn't counting as loudly and as enthusiastic. A few people are counting but the rest of them are trying to destroy the count. They, don't, they want Jose to get up, and the fall, and the match, and this fence match, goes to Gino Hernandez. He is the winner.